Pat, Sandra Rivera is running off to become the CEO of Nuco. What's going on at Intel? That's right. So second spin uh, for Intel Corporation. The first one was Mobileye. And the second one here is PSG. And, and PSG is the Programmable Systems Group or Programmable Solutions Group, which equates to FPGAs. And Dan, uh, we've talked a lot on the 6.5 uh, about FPGAs, uh, really honing in on what Lattice has done. I think what Lattice has, has shown is that if you're a pure play, you can grow uh, more than anybody else consistently in, not just in the space, but even semiconductors for um, a company uh, their size. Uh, they've outperformed, I think, everybody maybe except uh, Broadcom uh, out there. But I love the, you know, up and to the right charts that that are two years uh, in, in extension. And, and I just love that. So with this, uh, not only does Intel get to, you know, quote unquote, unlock shareholder value. And here's very basically uh, what that means is that the sum of the parts at Intel don't equate to what Intel believes is a fair market cap number, okay? And by spinning each unit out, uh, it can be more easily compared. Uh, the thought is on Wall Street, it can, it can move, it's more focused and can move uh, quicker. So uh, you saw the Intel stock uh, pop, you saw the Lattice stock go down, <laughs> right? Uh, at the same time, so this makes sense. Uh, from a focus standpoint, right? I think this enables, uh, Intel to focus on CPU, GPU, uh, and, and NPU, okay? And then FPGAs for whatever the uh, the NUCO uh, is. So very straightforward from Wall Street standpoint. Uh, this is about focus. Intel uh, will retain most of the ownership uh, of, of the company. Uh, I think, you know, it does beg the question uh, for AMD, uh, which says, hey, we, we bought Xilinx for 3x billion and what does that mean from a uh adding uh, incremental uh value if you look at the percentage of the size of those businesses i i do think that this doesn't negate you know just because intel spins out doesn't negate the benefit of xilinx to amd and, and its customer sets but you know we're we will have to see and i'm i'm looking forward to working with uh, uh, newly minted uh, CEO, uh, Sandra Rivera. Sandra, you know where to find us. Absolutely, Pat. Look, you and I have been less than shy about touting the potential of F FPGAs. And as we're moving to more of the hardened silicon, you know, the FPGA has been a catalyst to getting to that, but it's also, you know, been the whole continuum from the, the large scale that you see often from Intel and, and from AMD with Xilinx. And, you know, we've been very positive about the likes of Lattice Semiconductor and what they're doing in the small and mid range. But what we do know is this space is hot. For Intel though, you know, this is, I think, a, a big Wall Street move. Why is it a big Wall Street move? Well, first of all, it's mobilized spinoff has proven to be very successful for adding shareholder value. Intel, you know, retained the majority of the control of that business but was able to unlock a whole lot of market cap and, and liquidity for the company. This is a little bit different because Intel will need to create the agreements that will exist between uh, you know, the new business and its existing business from an IDM and integration standpoint. But from a ability to put focus, unlock market potential and, and really create and unlock that shareholder value, you've seen, Pat, I mean, what stock in the semis has performed better than besides NVIDIA? What's it, what has performed better this year than Lattice? And I think it's few and far between. Yeah. And that's because Lattice, despite market complexities, has been well diversified and has been able to continue to grow against, against the trend lines. Well, PSG has been a, a pretty strong business. And while Intel hasn't talked a lot about the details of the performance of that business, it is very interesting. So it's a positive one.